Hi everyone and welcome to Connect at Porsche. I'm delighted that you're here today, here with me live as my real audience, well, somehow digitally. Yeah, over the next 60 minutes, we'll have a look at what Porsche has to offer here, why sound and car create a whole new relationship and why the hearts of motorsport fans are to be faster. So everything's digital, everything's connected. That leads us instantly to the question, does this also apply to the icon of the brand, the Porsche 911? The 911 has long been one of the most important models for Porsche, so it's natural that it's also the inspiration for all other model lines. Its silhouette, proportions, and indeed certain other design features can be found on every Porsche. This is not just about the functionalities in the car, but also about our complete development processes, what we call a function end-to-end. In developing the new sixth-generation Porsche communication management, we decided that the 911 would take the lead. You can see very clearly from this cockpit how important infotainment systems are today. They are a key interface for the driver and play a major role in the operation of the vehicle. On the other hand, we are of course talking about a premium product, quality and the latest technology are expected. That also applies to the car's infotainment, of course. Since we also work across platforms and model ranges, it is good for the 911 to be part of this. It always helps to keep the car modern and fresh. Of course, there's a balancing act that we have to fulfill. We can't forget where we come from, but we always need to keep an eye on where the action will be in one, five, or ten years' time. We have to get used to the fact that we no longer have the luxury of taking three years to develop something, nor can we think a year in advance about what we want to introduce four years hence. By then, the infotainment world outside will already have moved on three times. That's why we need agile methods, which we also use to develop our software. I believe that the introduction of agile working is very much in line with the way we want to work, in small, manageable packages. We tackle these, see where we come out, and then take the next step. Of course, there is a big overarching goal, but we don't need the complete complexity all of the time. And then, of course, at Porsche, and this is something I particularly like, we have Porsche Engineering, Porsche Digital, and, of course, our development partners. It's really fun to work with these colleagues who, again, give us inspiration from other areas to translate into our cars. On the one hand, there is the vehicle world, which has to be safe, robust and perfect in terms of quality. On the other hand, there is the world of consumer electronics. This is fast moving and extremely high paced and always has to be up to date. You have to combine these two worlds. In any case, the open character of Porsche Digital is very important, especially in order to try something out. I believe that we simply have more freedom here in Ludwigsburg. That's enormously important in order to keep up with the digital offerings that are available. I also think it's important that these things are integrated into the vehicle. But that doesn't mean that the customer should be able to see afterwards that it was developed in Ludwigsburg or Weissach. One should be able to see that Porsche, the whole company, has put a lot of thought into us that it really works well in the vehicle. I don't think you can have one without the other. But we have definitely created the opportunity to think freely and contribute ideas. And you can see also that in PCM 6.0, with all the functionalities we have now built in. These are some of the topics that came in from our colleagues as part of a, hey, let's give it a try. This is an exciting upheaval and transformation, but it's not in our future. We're right in the middle of it. We have to shape it, we have to experience it, and we have to get involved in it. I think that is very important at this point.
Yes, going new ways, shaping them and getting involved. This is something which my next guest is literally doing, so I'm very happy to have him here. Martin Bayer. Hi, Martin. Hey. So you said something amazing in that video. You said Ludwigsburg or Weissach, at the end of the day, it has to say Porsche to the customer. Nevertheless, two worlds connect together. From which initial fail did the greatest success arise in the end? I think um, there were a few uh, different fails uh, in, the, in the early project phase um, because, like just it, it was just mentioned, uh, we, we tried a few things, um, uh, but very early we, we, we saw that uh, some of the concepts, some of the functionalities are maybe not, hmm, let's say, driver-oriented enough. So um, maybe it's in, in the first uh, idea, it's maybe uh, great to have all smartphone functionalities also in the car. Uh, but then you, you realize during development uh, that it's not really helping the driver and that it's not really useful in the car. So we had a few cases or fails like that. But uh, I think we managed somehow to learn from them. Um, so for sure, they are not, not part of the product today. Um, but um, yeah, we, we were able to learn from them. And uh, also, we had a few fails for sure um, when, when talking about user interface concepts. Um, and when, when we figured out that during the first test drives, it, it's not really intuitive and not really working. Um, but that's uh, where agile development helps a lot uh, to, to make the product uh, better. And I think that helped the PCM6. So that was a good intro for the PCM 6th the sixth generation. And we will have a look what this corporation means for the sixth generation of the Porsche communication management. And also your gambler past as a teenager for the success of this project. My classmates always said that someday my name will be in the credits for a big computer game. Now it's not a computer game, but a different product, which is great fun and very enjoyable. Hello, my name is Martin Bayer. I'm responsible for the development of infotainment systems at Porsche. I've always been fascinated by cars, which is certainly nothing special at Porsche. But in my case, I've also been interested in computer and software development. PCM 6.0 is certainly a big step we're taking again. The look and feel is new. It's tidier. It's more intuitive. It's certainly more restrained in its design language in keeping with the car. We're not fancy or glitzy. Of course, we make huge steps from one vehicle generation to the next. This means that we're at the cutting edge in terms of power, performance and usability. At the same time, however, it was also important to us that we develop a user interface that is very driver and customer oriented. That means we have a system that is very easy to operate. In other words, very few operating steps are required to access the important information and the most important functionalities. For example, we've developed certain suggestions based on the system being able to recognize what the user has done at what point in time during a certain learning period. It will then offer them suggestions at the right time in a later phase. This, in turn, reduces the number of operating steps. The system's designed to be highly adaptive and interactive. It's not necessarily about offering the largest display, but rather about creating the best user experience in the car that is characteristically Porsche. That means it's driver-oriented and offers functions that are very well thought out and offer great added value. I think we have coined a wonderful term for this at Porsche, driver experience. We don't have a user experience, our customers are drivers. Personalization is very important for us. We offer very individual settings for each individual Porsche customer. That means they have the option of configuring both the menu bar and the launcher themselves. This means that they can drag and drop the controls they use most often into the launcher. They can customize it to a very high degree. We've integrated music streaming in the car. Everything is personalized via the Porsche ID with the best digital hi-fi sound experience. We're particularly proud of the deep integration of Apple Music. We have the option that when users hear a certain song on the radio that they like, they can add it to their Apple Music playlist. This means that they do not even have to connect their device to PCM. We actually have a deep integration that offers the users the possibility of operating Apple Music directly in PCM. This combination of the traditional radio and modern streaming experiences is a special feature of PCM 6.0 and a special feature for Porsche.
glaube, das ist schon eine... I think it's an important guideline for us that we don't just see things in purely functional terms. We want to invoke enthusiasm, a sparkle in our customers' eyes. In this area too. Of course, it's important that we also connect PCM to our Porsche Connect app. We have various approaches to this. We can integrate the contents of the calendar, but we also have the option of exchanging navigation destinations. And what's also important and typical of Porsche is the application of vehicle functions. This means we have the option of using remote parking to park the vehicle via the smartphone app from outside the vehicle. Motorsport is also important to us, and in this context we have the Porsche Track Precision app. Here we can offer customers the option of displaying the relevant information in PCM 6.0 and to make it operable on the racetrack. I think we've managed the challenges pretty well, both in terms of technology and the new methods of collaboration. I'm really proud of what the team has achieved, and that's really the future for me. Yes, and uh, since we're on the subject of racing and driving. I can't miss my next interview partner. So let's go over there. He's waiting for us. Great to have you here, Eduard Schulz. Hi, Eddie. Hi. So what you did for gaming, what, what kind of game you played, that's what you tell us later, and also why it is worth its weight in gold for your job. Um, but first of all, I want to ask a question because we're talking about uh, racing in the next part. And for me, racing is like pure emotion. And of course, the professionals, they need data to improve their skills. But as a hobby racer, isn't it enough to just drive and have fun, so why is it important to collect data for your customers? Yeah, with the recorded data in the video, you can recap your drive and you can analyze your potentials maybe and uh, to get a safer and faster driver on the circuit. That is a quick and good answer. So where mom complained, Eddie can really benefit today from uh, its teenage night sessions again. And yeah, this is what came out. I studied automotive engineering. In 1997, when I was just 14, I loved playing Porsche Challenge on my PlayStation 1 with the optional steering wheel. Hello, my name is Eduard Schulz. I've been working at Porsche for 13 years in the connected car department. I'm responsible for the track precision app and the off-road app. Early on, my supervisor said, wasn't there something about you being a bit racing crazy? I responded, yes, very much so. So they told me to shed some light on that as a hobby. The result is that I've been working on the app for the last five years. All you need to use the Track Precision app is a Porsche, your phone, and a racetrack. The motivation for the Track Precision app was that we noticed that customers were recording more and more. And on the racetrack, we saw lots of people making onboard videos. So it was clear to us, seeing as we had the vehicle data, we could fuse it with video and therefore have an attractive telemetry system on the smartphone. The bottom line is that we have a function in PCM 6.0 that provides us with this vehicle data at a high resolution and high data rate. This interface has been completely redeveloped. It is more modern, performs better and is more stable. In the background, it has become very complex, but in the foreground, it is very simple. You scan the QR code and are immediately connected. We have extra display space in CarPlay mode, and the app receives even more data. There we have the temperatures, you can record the tire temperatures as well. So you can track that data and see how it has increased. But we've also optimized the GPS again. That's always the most important thing with the GPS lap timer. It is also always the most difficult because you have a lot of boundary conditions and the GPS has to work very well. The number of users then gradually increases, which is always good. Of course, we are also next to the Porsche Connect app, which is used in everyday life. Clearly, it has the highest usage rate. The track app is not used as often, unless there is a track day driver who is constantly on the circuit. But we have relatively good usage figures, considering that the product is positioned so specifically, only for recreational driving on the racetrack. 
The enthusiasts can also connect an action cam. It works with GoPro. Do you need a special GoPro for this? All GoPros from GoPro Hero 5, so those that support Bluetooth communication. If you then ask the customers, they tend to do it just for themselves, for their other enthusiastic friends. You have your small groups, communities and clubs that share it among themselves. You can see the exact driver input, and on the other side, directly in the video, the vehicle data in the form of lateral acceleration, slip, oversteer and understeer. This functionality is really impressive. The more information you have, the more you learn. I'll be happy to spend a lot of time with it in the future. Really great. And ultimately, you can book in again, stronger and more self-confident. I think that also motivates people to go out on the track again. Sound belongs to Porsche, as the victory of the 24 hours race at Nürburgring belongs to Porsche as well. But if you're now thinking about the sound of an engine, you're unfortunately on the wrong track. I'm talking about the sound inside a car. And therefore, let's meet our next interview guest here. And this is Norman Friedenberger, who is inventing right now something pretty amazing, but without giving too much away. When you think back at the start of the project, do you think it could be done faster, easier, and with less coffee? I knew from the very beginning it was, it was a, I mean, pretty, pretty impressive challenge that comes, um, that comes toward us. We spent two years in development, um, but the actual process, you know, thinking about this as a concept goes way back into the early 2000s. So we had enough coffee and we did enough driving because we needed to test a lot in order to make this experience sound good. And it really sounds very, very good. So we have a look at what you are developing right now. And we have a look at why an invention of the year 1979 is a really huge invention for your personal career. We were on a school trip in Berlin and sitting in a railway carriage with a family who had a son my age. He had a Walkman. I'd never put anything like it on my ears until then and had never really listened to stereo. At that time, mono was still very common. I put these two orange foam rubber pads on my ears and Kraftwerk was playing. That sound was an incisive experience. I had never had that before. It really fascinated me. My name is Norman Friedenberger. I'm a product owner at Porsche Digital and head of the Soundtrack My Life project. The topic of sound has a huge tradition within Porsche. Soundtrack My Life fits perfectly with Porsche because it creates a sound experience in the interior that is emotive. And that's why it's a topic for Porsche. I started taking extended road trips in the U.S. in the early 2000s. To put a soundtrack to this experience of driving around with music that actually helps to immerse and emotionalize you into the scenery. If only that could be done automatically. That was actually the idea for Soundtrack My Life. To soundtrack my life. So, and das Konzept hatte In my vision, the concept had a certain sound aesthetic that I wanted to make available to the driver, listener, user. I became aware of a man in LA, Boris Alchow, who had a similar approach to developing such a system, but from a completely different point of view. He was in traffic jams a lot and never really found the right music for such a situation. Which is why he said, I need something that's based on what I experience here. Hi, my name is Boris Seicho, and I have developed the adaptive music software framework that is at the core of Soundtrack My Life. The idea of transferring Soundtrack My Life to the car was actually aimed precisely at embedding this adaptivity and personalized experience in a driving situation. We take data like speed and acceleration. Those are essential aspects that serve to personalize what comes to my ear in such a way that I have the impression that I'm the composer of my own musical material. It's a really interesting and new thing that hasn't been done before. 
I was extremely inspired by the adaptive music system because it has the ability to synchronize between the motions and the music. The Porsche driver gets into his or her car and starts a soundtrack that they feel is appropriate for the situation. As soon as they start to accelerate, they'll notice that individual sounds start to play and develop musical patterns and harmonies that become more and more complex. The complexity of what comes to the ear is one-to-one -one dependent on how they drive, how fast they drive, and how hard they accelerate and brake. You have to think of it like this. This is a composition that exists in a great many individual parts. But the way these individual parts are brought together and mixed, and how they reach my ears, and in what chronological order, that's exactly the point where Soundtrack My Life and the algorithms ensure that the musical experience is always a new one. That gives a completely different perspective on what I'm listening to. That's what makes it so attractive for us, to use this as a styling element in the vehicle, so to speak. We are now in the process of actually testing this physically in the vehicle and creating an overall experience. Amazing. So Porsche really can say that they create an individual sound for their customers. And at the first time I saw it, I thought, goodness, how is that working? And I think it's totally complex, but I have to ask it anyway. So how do you um, transcribe the motion data into sound? Yeah, it's a pretty complex process that is maybe a little bit different and difficult to understand but when you compare it to what you're used to listen to, talking about like regular music, um, linear tracks um, that have a start and an end and that is always fixed you know instruments would come in at the same time uh, vocals would be coming in at the same time so this is what you used to know um, here we're talking about a different format it's called adaptive music adaptive music means there's music that adapts to what is happening so what's happening is something that you can define um, in the context of driving what we take as what's happening is basically speed information, acceleration, braking, and you know those sort of things that basically define your driving experience. So we put those elements, put them on top of, um, let's call it a pre-composed musical, um, you know, like a database. And there's an algorithmic um, know-how that we, that, we, that we use and utilize that has been trained and programmed for a couple of years that pulls out the right things at the right time and always combines them in a new way so that the experience that you have while driving um, is always a little bit new and sounds always a little bit different. So it's nothing that you can compare to a drive sound that is you know, just time stretched or pitched. It is really a composition that you bring to life the way you drive your car. I'm so thankful that you said it is really complex. So that was very gentleman-like. Um, I think that there are so many parameters to use to create sound. And you said, for example, when you accelerate or you, you um, have to brake or something like that, then you create sound. But there are so many data. There's so many data here, so much data we can use. Um, is that another option for the future, maybe with AI to use, let's say, the, the data we have with the cameras and, and stuff like that? Um, it's a very good question. So first of all, we rely on a very specific amount of data. So we don't want to overwhelm the process of composition and thus not overwhelm the listener and the driver in the car. You can really react to a lot of interactivity, a lot of data that is around you that is not just braking and accelerating, but using this data in a meaningful way is a difficult challenge because it easily gets too much for a listener and for a driver because you still need to concentrate on the situation that you're in. Um, so we really take care that um, we precisely, first of all, compose material that fits specific situations, which is why we don't use any you know, AI at this point in time, um, because we still believe that the artist should be at the center of you know, creativity. And people love to listen to music because there's an artist who tells a story, who has something to say. Um, they're interested in the process of the creation of a piece of music. And I think this is a very elementary um, part of this project, which is why we want to work 
with the best in business, film composers, sound designers, and also artists, musical artists, that are renowned and have a good name and understand the format of adaptive music because it's, it's, it's not to compare it to really just write a song, you know, as I said in the beginning, that has a start and end. You need to understand the format perfectly and be able to, to really create a bunch of single tracks that always make sense at any given time, at any given moment. So you really walk the talk when you say we want to create a driver experience and not just a user experience. Thank you so much for all the insights, Norman. I think we see you again and we hear you again at another time. Thank you so much for being here. Pleasure. And of course, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you had a good time with us and yeah, drive safely, stay tuned, stay healthy and I hope you always have the right soundtrack on your side. So bye bye.